Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for June the 15th lesson, Lesson 166, and A Course in Miracles Workbook for Students. Lesson 166, I am entrusted with the gifts of God. I am entrusted with the gifts of God. If we're entrusted with a gift, what are we entrusted with it for? For our happiness and the salvation and happiness of the world. Before we read that lesson, let's uh, talk a moment about yesterday's lesson. Let not my mind deny the thought of God. What but your thoughts of misery and death obscure the perfect happiness and the eternal life your Father wills for you? What but your thoughts of misery and death obscure the perfect happiness and eternal life your Father wills for you. What could keep from you what you already have, except your choice to see it not? Denying it is there. So it's already there, but your thought to deny it keeps you from being aware of your eternal position of, of being blessed with happiness from God eternally. The thought of God created you, it left you not, nor have you ever been apart from it an instant. <laughs> That's nice to know. It belongs to you. By it you live, it is your source of life, holding you one with it, and everything is one with you, because it left you not. Who would deny his safety and his peace, his joy, his healing, and his peace of mind? his quiet rest, his calm awakening, if he but recognized where they abide, would he not instantly prepare to go where they are found, abandoning all else as worthless in comparison with them? Deny not heaven. It is yours today, but for the asking. <laughs> Ask to receive, and it is given you. But ask with desire. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. Ask with desire. Every, every thought's a prayer. Every desire's a prayer. And when you desire the heavenly, the Christ light to, to, to come in you, it gives you everything. Once you understand that, you'll abandon everything and go only to that. And you'll be asking with desire. And you'll have, as he talks about here in a minute, ecstatic vision. This is what we need to be uh, alive and ecstatic about, about God, enthused, to be filled with God. All right? Ask with desire. You need not be sure that you request the only thing you want. Okay? You don't even have to be sure that you're requesting the only thing you want. Because God's sure, and he's going to be your help. But when you have received, you will be sure you have the treasure you have always sought. <laughs> what would induce you now to let it fade away from your ecstatic vision? What would induce you now to let it fade away from your ecstatic vision? How important it is that we ask with desire to the place where we really, really desire it and want it and, and look forward to it and are incredibly appreciative and ecstatically happy about it. Your ecstatic vision, for this sight proves that you have exchanged your blindness for the seeing eyes of Christ. <laughs> Would God consent to let his son remain forever starved by his denial of the nourishment he needs to live? There's that bread of life, the nourishment that makes you truly live. Abundance dwells in him, and deprivation cannot cut him off from God's sustaining love and from his home. See, so that, that what is it? Uh, abundance dwells in us. And deprivation, our deprived thoughts, they cannot cut us off from God's sustaining love and from our home. Practice today in hope. Why? Because hope is justified. 
Your doubts are meaningless, for God is certain. That's what I wanted you to really see, is that even if you... This is what I got out of the lesson most, mostly, is that my weakness is met by the strength of God. I don't have to remember all this. I just need to take those quiet times to let him remind me, to lead me, to guide me, to help me to be appreciative for what I've been given and to prepare me for the hour to come. So remember in those hourly remembrances were to give thanks for that hour that has gone by and be receptive to what lies ahead during the happenings of your day and for the events so that you'll know how to be led and guided in a happy way to where all these treasures can be given to you as you learn to see through the eyes of Christ. And certainly we remember to take those uh, few minutes of longer extended period, morning and evening of, let's call it 15 minutes or less or more, but be sure to do that. That's what you need. That's what we all need so that we can receive the strength of God so that his, his strength is there and is going to support us. We just need to get out of the way and let him do it. You don't have to try to use a lot of mental abilities to accomplish this course and this happiness that belongs to you that's already there. That when you get there, you'll say, you'll say well, this was the journey without distance. I've always been here. I'm just myself and I'm aware of it. The thought of him is never absent. Sureness must abide within you who are host to him. This course removes all doubts which you have interposed between him and your certainty of him. Wow, that's quite a statement. This course removes all doubts which you have interposed between God and your certainty of God. We count on God and not upon ourselves to give us certainty. Okay, that's what I was trying to explain. We count on God and not upon ourselves to give us certainty. His sureness lies beyond every doubt. His love remains beyond our every fear. So I hope you uh, were encouraged by yesterday's uh Lesson, let not my mind deny the thought of God, which has now prepared us for lesson 166. I am entrusted with the gifts of God. Before we uh, read that, I want to show you this plant here at my farm. i sitting out here because I want to show you that this is, uh, you all know what this plant is. I, I, I think I'm going to try to bend it over so you can see the top. It was so tall, I couldn't really get it in the camera. But see that? That is a mullein plant. See how it's got those little yellow fl flowers that are starting to open and the, the bud, the, the whole flower head up here. This is its second year of growth. Uh, let me pull a leaf off so that you can see it a little better. Uh, the leaf is kind of a, 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 a woolly, matter of fact, some people call it woolly mullein. Uh, it's, its Latin name is verbascum, verbascum. Uh, and uh, a lot of people here in the Ozarks call it toilet paper plant. Works really well. Uh, but its main uses as from, a, uh, from an herbology and uh, healing standpoint, it's got quite a long list of uses, but mainly any kind of a, a, a respiratory problem. I, it, it, it's, it, that's, this is what a lot of people use. Uh, cough. Uh, whooping cough, tuberculosis, bronchitis, hoarseness, pneumonia, uh, earache, cold, chills, flu, swine flu, fever, allergies, tonsillitis, sore throat, asthma, diarrhea, colic, gastrointestinal bleeding, migraines, joint pain, gout. It's got all kinds of uses that uh, were, uh, were known to our ancestors and we're trying to all now kind of remember so, you know, making a tea of this, it, it actually tastes pretty good. Uh, it's kind of hard to chew up. Making a tea is probably easier. Uh, it's really uh, fibrous when you try to chew it up. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to show you this mullein plant here at my farm. All right, let's go uh, lesson uh, 166. I am entrusted with the gifts of God. All things are given you. God's trust in you is limitless. 
He knows his son. He gives without exception, holding nothing back that can contribute to your happiness. Wow, holding nothing back that can contribute to your happiness. What a promise. And yet, unless you, your will is one with his, his gifts are not received. We've got to find his will in us and realize that our self is one with his self. And that's how we receive his gifts. But what would make you think there is another will than his? Here is the paradox that underlies the making of the world. This world is not the will of God, and so it is not real. Wow, we're living in an illusion, a dream, a make-believe. Here is the paradox that underlies the making of the world. This world is not real. This world is not the will of God, and so it is not real. Yet those who think it real must still believe there is another will, and one that leads to opposite effects from those he wills. Impossible indeed, but every mind that looks upon the world and judges it as certain, solid, trustworthy, and true, believes in two creators, or in one, himself alone, but never in one God. Because this is a world of death and pain, so it can't be real. There must be another reality behind the appearance, is what he's wanting us to see. This is why we need the vision of Christ, the forgiven world. It shows us there is no death. That's what Jesus came to demonstrate. The gifts of God, paragraph 3, the gifts of God are not acceptable to anyone who holds such strange beliefs. He must believe that to accept God's gifts, however evident they may become, however urgently he may be called to claim them as his own, is being pressed to treachery against himself. He must deny their presence, contradict the truth, and suffer to preserve the world he made. Here is the only home he thinks he knows. Here is the only safety he believes that he can find. Without the world he made, is he an outcast, homeless and afraid? He does not realize that it is here he is afraid indeed, and homeless too, an outcast. Wandering so far from home, so long away, he does not realize he has forgotten where he came from, where he goes, and, who, and even who he really is. That's our state, that we do not realize that we have forgotten where we came from and where we go or who we really are. Yet in his lonely, senseless wandering, God's gifts go with him all unknown to him he cannot lose them see they're all they're with us you can't you can't get away from god's gifts you can't get away from your perfection your your oneness with god your goodness uh his love your love but he will not look at what is given him he wanders on aware of the futility he sees about him everywhere, perceiving how his little lot but dwindles as he goes ahead to nowhere, still he wanders on in misery and poverty, alone, though God is with him, and a treasure his so great that everything the world contains is valueless before its magnitude. 6. He seems a sorry figure, weary, worn, in threadbare clothing, and with feet that bleed a little from the rocky road he walks. No one but has identified with him, for everyone who comes here has pursued the path he follows and has felt defeat and hopelessness as he is feeling them. Well, we're, we're not alone in our misery, are we? <laughs> Yet is he really tragic? when you see that he is following the way he chose and needs but realize who walks with him and open up his treasures to be free. So God walks with us and we can open up these treasures that God has bestowed upon us and we'll be free. Seven, 
This is your chosen self, the one you made as replacement for reality. This is the self you savagely defend against all reason. This is the self you savagely defend against all reason. Every evidence and all the witnesses with proof to show this is not you. You, you heed them not. You go on your appointed way with eyes cast down, lest you might catch a glimpse of truth and be released from self-deception and set free. 8. You cower fearfully, lest you should feel Christ's touch upon your shoulder and perceive His gentle hand directing you to look upon your gifts. How could you then proclaim your poverty in exile? He would make you laugh at the perception of yourself. We see this, this person hunkered down and scared and afraid to look up. And yet Christ comes and gently touches us on the shoulder. He would make you laugh at this perception of yourself. <laughs> Where is self-pity then when you can laugh at yourself? Where's self-pity then? And what becomes of all the tragedy you sought to make for him? whom God intended only joy. <laughs> we, need, we want to step into the joy of following the Christ. He's touching us on the shoulder, saying, Hey, come on, brother. Let's have a happy life. It's all been given to you. Nine, your ancient fear has come upon you now, and justice has caught up with you at last. Christ's hand has touched your shoulder, and you feel that you are not alone. You even think the miserable self you thought was you may not be your identity. Well, that's good. Perhaps God's word is truer than your own. Perhaps his gifts to you are real. Perhaps he has not wholly been outwitted by your plan to keep his son in deep oblivion and go the way you chose without your self, spelled with a capital S. 10. God's will does not oppose. It merely is. It is not God you have imprisoned in your plan to lose yourself. He does not know about a plan so alien to his will. <laughs> That's why he made the Holy Spirit, because the Creator doesn't even know about it. He only sees perfection, only good. He doesn't even know about a plan so alien to his will. There was a need he did not understand. You ever think that there was something that God didn't understand? He didn't understand it. But what did, he, what did he do about it? There was a need he did not understand, to which he gave an answer, capital A, answer. That is all. And you who have this answer given you have need no more of anything but this. The answer. Atonement. The vision of Christ the real world, the forgiven world. 11. Now do we live, for now we cannot die. The wish for death is answered, and the sight that looked upon it now has been replaced by vision, which perceives that you are not what you pretend to be. One walks with you who gently answers all your fears with this one merciful reply. It is not so. <laughs> He points to all the gifts you have each time the thought of poverty oppresses you and speaks of his companionship when you perceive yourself as lonely and afraid. His companionship is with you when you stumble and perceive yourself as lonely and afraid. Just remember, his companionship's there that gives you everything. Twelve, yet he reminds you still of one thing more you had forgotten. For his touch on you has made you like himself. The gifts you have are not for you alone. What he has come to offer you, you must now learn to give. This is the lesson that his giving holds. For he has saved you from the solitude you sought to make in which to hide from God. He has reminded you of all the gifts that God has given you. He speaks as well of what becomes your will when you accept these gifts and recognize they are your own. 13. 
the gifts are yours, entrusted to your care to give to all who chose the lonely road you have escaped. Wow, now we have these gifts that we can share with our brothers who are walking the lonely road that we've escaped. They do not understand, they but pursue their wishes. It is you who teach them now. They don't understand that they're just pursuing their wishes to be separate from God. It is you who teach them now. For you have learned of Christ, there is another way for them to walk. For you have learned from Christ, there is another way for them to walk. Teach them by what? By showing them the happiness that comes to those who feel the touch of Christ and recognize God's gifts. Let sorrow not tempt you to be unfaithful to your trust. Wow. Let sorrow not tempt you to be unfaithful to your trust. And what is our trust? I am entrusted with the gifts of God. I'm entrusted with them to share them. Your sighs will now betray the hopes of those who look to you for their release. Your tears are theirs. If you are sick, you but withhold their healing. What you fear but teaches them, their fears are justified. Your hand becomes the giver of Christ's touch. Your change of mind becomes the proof that who accepts God's gifts can never suffer anything. You are entrusted with the world's release from pain. Wow, what a wonderful trust to help the world be free from pain. And the last paragraph, betray it not. Betray not what? You are entrusted with the world's release from pain. Betray it not. Become the living proof of what Christ's touch can offer everyone. God has entrusted all his gifts to you. Be witness in your happiness to how transformed the mind becomes which chooses to accept his gifts and feel the touch of Christ. Be witness to your happiness. Oh, be witness in your happiness to how transformed the mind becomes which chooses to accept his gifts and feel the touch of Christ. So how do we save the world? By being happy ourselves? Now that doesn't sound like such a bad idea, does it? We get to be happy and we save the world in the process. That's why we got to have these quiet times to, to, to remember who we are and then keep them alive throughout the day with our, our hourly remembrance. Be witness in your happiness to how transformed the mind becomes which chooses to accept his gifts and feel the touch of Christ. Such is your mission now. For God entrusts the giving of his gifts to all who have received them. For God entrusts the giving of his gifts to all who have received them. He has shared his joy with you, and now you go to share it with the world. <laughs> he shared his joy with us. Now we go to share it with the world. Wow, how wonderful. Hey, I've got to tell you one more thing. Yesterday, I was telling you about the, the, the difference between uh, the um, poison hemlock and the Queen Anne's lace, which some people get confused, and I didn't want you to use the poison hemlock thinking you were eat some, eat, eating Queen Anne's lace. And so I was showing you a few differences about it, and I told you that, that the hollow stem in that thing is is actually on the one I know. The, the, I've been I looked at several to see if it was true about the ones that I've got growing here, and the hollow stem was not in the Queen Anne's lace. It was on the uh, poison hemlock. But just be aware of, of and just be aware of checking, making sure you are getting the right herbs. There's a lot of different plants that you can uh, um, you, that are similar, and. Uh, Anyway, so I, I, want, I meant to say that when we were talking about plants a while ago, and uh, I failed to, and I didn't want to let that slip by because it was really important that you, uh, you know, that you're not making a mistake on something like that. Uh, you'll, you'll, you, we'll, we're going to keep working with these plants and, and learn them as we go along, but, uh, um, but I did want to make that mention. 
let's 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 look one more time. I am entrusted with the gifts of God. I am entrusted with the gifts of God. You are entrusted with the world's release from pain. Betray it not. Become the living proof of what Christ's touch can offer everyone. God has entrusted all his gifts to you. Be witness in your happiness to how transformed the mind becomes which chooses to accept his gifts and feel the touch of Christ. Such is your mission now. For God entrusts the giving of his gifts to all who have received them. He has shared his joy with you. And now you go to share it with the world. I am entrusted with the gifts of God. Until tomorrow, tell yourself often, I am entrusted with the gifts of God.